What is going on, Swoopers? Welcome back to another episode of Swoop Luke. In this episode, we'll be asking and answering, why imagine? Let's just jump into it. Before we do jump into it, of course, follow me on all my social media accounts, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. They're all Swoop Luke. They're all in the bio down below. If you are a new Swoopers, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. Be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. And if you are a returning super, welcome back. Thank you so much for rejoining us. Why imagine? So you're probably thinking, why is there a video about Jack Imagine? And let me tell you, today, which is the, let me tell you, it is the 19th of October. Jack Imagine has just signed a one year contract extension. I post about it on my Instagram page, Swoop Luke, and every second comment, maybe every third comment, why imagine? Why imagine? He should not be on the list. He's not AFL grade quality. Uh, this is why we're 17th. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to deep dive a little bit into Imagine season and stuff like that, comparing to a couple of our other players. We'll just have a chat, um, and as always, sound off in the comments. Jack Madgen, a basketballer by trade, playing for Delta State University and then the Cairns Taipans, was signed by Collingwood in 2017 as a Cat B rookie, plays in the back line and debuted in 2018. So before his debut in 2018, Madgen was averaging 15 disposals, 5 marks, uh, playing off that halfback role in the VFL. He came in in 2018 in replace of Jeremy Howe said that he should have stuck to basketball. He kicked six goals that day. Uh, he also played on Sam Reid that day, who kicked six goals. He didn't kick, get 12 goals kicked on him, but he was playing against two um, tall timbers in the Sydney squad. So, Majin has been a staple in our side in 2020 and 2021. In 2020, Majin played 13 of a possible 19 games, and in 2021, he played 19 of a possible 22 games. So you can tell that this year was more consistent. But why? Okay. Imagine is great depth for us. Um, you need depth players in all sort of areas. You need depth in the forward line. You know, we've got uh, McMahon uh, coming through. You need depth in the ruck. We had Lynch. We signed Beg up. Uh, you need depth down back. We've got Jack Imagine. Now... He played 13 games last year, played uh, 19 games this year. What happened in those two years? Jeremy Hale played four games last season, and I think he played five games this season, all because of injury. Jeremy Hale goes down. Darcy Moore goes down. We have no Jack Imagine because everyone wants to get rid of him. Who are you left with? Mark King? Okay. Who else? You, are you going to tell me right now that you, you trust Anton Tohill in that sort of role, a new, a new kid learning the game? No, you need that depth. And Jack Imagine is that guy. Look, I won't, um, I won't beat around the bush. There's times where Jack Imagine absolutely frustrates me, some of the things that he does. There are times when Taylor Adam frustrates me, John Noble, Brody Grundy, um, Jordan Dugowie, I don't know, Steel Sidebottom. That's that's the joy of football, you know? The the joy of football. They're not um not everyone can be A graders and not everybody can be 250 300 gamers. You know, you look at all our list, not all of them are going to get to 300 games. Jack Imagine might not be one of those guys. 28, so he's only played 40 games, so he probably won't get to even maybe 100 games. But you need that depth in your list to cover for injuries. We would be far worse off if there was no Jack Madgen and Jeremy Howe and Darcy Moore went down like they've done for the last couple of years. Ruffett is uh, getting a little bit older now. He's starting to slow down. Look, what I'm just trying to say is that there's a lot of hate for Jack Madgen and I get it, but let's look at some of his clangers. Oh, he's always messing the ball up. He's always doing this, he's always doing that. And let's compare him to some of the other guys in the back line. Jack Madgen this season averaged two clangers from 19 games. 
Darcy Moore this season averaged 2.46 clangers from 13 games. Brayden Maynard this season averaged 2.95 clangers from 22 games. Taylor Adams averaged 5.79 clangers from 14 games. And everyone wants him to be the next captain. We can't base our thoughts off that one stat. Okay? We can't base our thoughts off the clanger stat. And there was a good tweet, and, and I'll read it out. Um, so this is from at BJRussell95 on Twitter. He says, I think it's the fact that while he doesn't make 10 errors per game, when he does make them from time to time, they are pretty big ones that can't go unnoticed. He annoys me at times, but definitely worth having on the list as a fringe player. Hope he can clean up the brain face. Now look, I there was a lot of tweets um, praising Madge, a lot of tweets hating on Madge. I like that tweet because I think that's the crux of it. He might make two clangers a game. Those two clangers can prove costly, okay? And that's what gets ingrained. They could Two clangers could lead to two goals. But we, look, and I'm going to use this as a real throw this out there example. We talk about how good of a uh, defender Darcy Moore is, all Australian, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And look, I love Darcy Moore. I want him to be the next captain uh, and all these other stuff. He's just absolutely incredible. Think back to the Carlton game where Harry Mackay kicked five or six, Darcy Moore's direct opponent, okay? Sure, that might have been a one-off. Darcy Moore hasn't always been a good one-on-one defender, but are we going to tell, say, you know, Darcy Moore shouldn't be in the team because he let Harry Mackay kick six goals on him? No, Darcy Moore does a lot of other things, and that's exactly what Jack Madgen does. Madgen doesn't deserve the hate that he gets, and... Look, I don't even know why I'm making this video and I'm going to post it. I just think that, you know, I'm just I'm just sick of it. And we can be we can be um, critical of our players. Like, you'll probably go through tweets and I'm probably saying shit about Jack, uh, Jack Madgen. And, you know, we get frustrated. But when you look at our list, look at our back line. We haven't signed a full back, a proper full back in so long. Ruffhead's getting older. Jeremy Howe's getting older and injury um, riddled. Jack Madgen, 28. He's going to be one of those guys in the team all the time. If, you know, maybe, oh, sorry, maybe not all the time. If Jeremy Hound, Darcy Moore are um, ready to go, Jordan Rafford's good to go, Madden probably doesn't play, right? But Craig McCray in, Justin uh, Lepich as well, they could reinvent Madden as that running half back, right? Yes, he has brain fades, but who doesn't in, in the game of football? Braden Maynard, 2.95 uh, clangers. Taylor Adams, 5.7 clangers a game. Six. If he gets 24 disposals in a game, a quarter of those are going to the opposition. So you have to look at it as, as a pers- perspective and in the sense that we need depth players. Yes, look, I agree. Imagine probably shouldn't be playing 22 games a season, he should be a bit part sort of player when we need him. But when we when we do need him, he does his job well enough. And look, you're probably going to think, oh, but well enough's not, not good enough. It has to do because we don't... We, it's, it, it says something about our recruiting over the years where we've recruited a lot of midfielders and we've got a couple of good halfbacks, Johnny Noble, uh, who turns it over quite a bit, Isaac Quainor as well, uh, Caleb Poulter now. I think Trembianco kind of sometimes plays off that halfback role. Um, we haven't uh, recruited any key backs because we're relying on uh, Jeremy Howe. We're relying on a Ruffy. We're relying on Moore. And now we have to rely on Imagine. And it all comes down to recruiting. I would love like a Sam Taylor or, um, you know, another another key back from, from another club. But that's just not how the cookie crumbles. And... Look, I'm not saying not to be critical of Madge, but I just don't think that he gets... I just don't think that he deserves the hate that he gets. And, um, yeah, I just I just wanted to come on uh, my platform and, and, and kind of talk about it. And, you know, like I said, we can be critical of players. That's the beauty of uh, the world that we live in, the free speech world that we live in, and watching football. And, of course, we're going to be critical of players. Of course, I imagine stuff's up and Taylor Adams stuff's up. And, yeah, let him have it, but... When you start getting personal and stuff, I mean, look, the players see this. You know, Taylor Adams even said in that interview that we had with him, you know, the players see this, they, they try and shoot it out. Some players, 
may not. Some players may be able to tune it out. But, you know, to say that Madden's not an AFL footballer or he should retire or he, or he gave away three goals at one stage. Okay. Darcy Moore gave away six against Mackay. That's not a that's not an argument to me. It's the same thing for Josh Thomas, same thing for Will Hoskin Elliott, yeah? Both whipping boys. Josh Thomas, in the video that I just had, he didn't have a 2018-2019 a season this year. But the other stuff that he was doing, the other pressure stuff that he was doing was great. But they're not stats that you see. You know, and just to use an example, uh, another crappy sort of example, but like Trelaw when he was playing for us, right? And, and, you, and you saw it uh, with the doggies at, at times. He could have 35 disposals. But if he's not making that defensive run and letting a player past him and that gets a goal, all you're looking at is, oh, cool, he had a good game, 35 disposals. You're not looking at the bigger sort of picture. You know what I mean? We just got to take a step back, chill out, criticize him for um, the mistakes that he made that leads to a goal. Sure, fine, whatever. But we got to learn to like just lay off the hate, you know? I think that's just what this video is about. And I think I've got some pent up like feelings about all of this, you know? Um, and look, I'll be the first to admit, put my hand up. We all give players crap and stuff, and I've done it. And I'll, I'll continue to do it, because that's just football. It's just the passion, and it's amazing that we're passionate. I'm not saying not to be passionate, but, you know, we just gotta, we just gotta learn to love. You know, that, that's, that's kind of what it is. And, and I just wanted to show you that, guys, that imagine, that Magin does deserve this one-year contract extension. There's only one year. He might retire at the end of next year. We might pick up two fullbacks at the end of next year and not need him. But he's been very serviceable when we need him. He stood up, made some mistakes, but he has stood up. Anyway, guys, this has just been... I'm recording this video at quarter to ten at night, so um, I'm a little... Bray's a little fried and stuff like that. But I would love to know all of your thoughts down below. One, what did you think of the video? Um... You know, just just talking about these sort of topics and my opinion and stuff like that. And two, what do you think of Jack Magin? And please keep it civil in the comments. But anyway, guys, like, comment, subscribe, tell your family, tell your friends, tell your friends, and I'll see you next time. Double shackers. I'll see you all later.